Call the meeting of the City Council of Water for Monday evening, April the 27th. Please stand as we pledge allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening, Councilors. Councilors, before we um, begin, just a couple of things. Um, I do want to indicate Councilor Stewart contacted me early this morning. It was about 7 p.m. and indicated he would be unable to attend this evening because of his work schedule. However, he also wanted to make sure that um, we move forward on uh, his uh, uh, proposed uh, plan that um, he has before us and uh, take the vote on that as appropriately. So um, I want to let everybody know that. Uh, Second of all, councilors, and I don't think you have any objections to it, but our uh, fire chief Francis is present this evening and he asked, um, contact me this afternoon and wanted to say a few words uh, to us this evening. I don't see any objections to that. So at this time, I'm gonna allow the uh, fire chief to uh, come forward and uh, speak to us. Good evening, councilors. Good evening, Good evening chief. chief. No Michelle, no Jace. This is gonna be an easy one. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be private. <laughs> <laughs> so good evening my how time flies five short years ago I was standing here as, as your new fire chief and um, you know after after a lot of soul searching I, I took that appointment and I, I came in with a clear plan of, of where we needed to go in the department and, and my vision of how we were going to get there um, I have a picture in my office um, of the Blue Angels flying over the Rockies. And it has an inspirational quote underneath, and it simply stated, it's amazing what can be accomplished when it doesn't matter who gets the credit. And that's what I based my five years as chief on. Um, it became my motto. The command staff accomplished a lot of amazing things in the last five years because they in turn embraced that concept. <clears throat> We decentralized the authority down and allowed people to run with an idea or a project. <coughs> a very simple, simple formula. We allowed people to do their jobs while allowing talented firefighters to broaden their horizons and embrace new operational concepts. And in return, I got accountability <coughs> top to bottom from both the officers and the rank and file firefighters. Majority of those projects done voluntarily at little or no <laughs> overtime costs. People stepped up to the plate and were more than happy to see something that they envisioned get done. A um, <clears throat> few of the things that we did in that time, and like I say, it was a team effort. I was just a small, I was the guy that turned around and said we could spend a dollar or not. Um, we overhauled the operational pro procedures throughout the department. We never accepted anything less than a dollar and a quarter in return for every dollar we spent. We found better and innovative ways to spend our limited funds. <clears throat> I negotiated the first ambulance contract that for the first time gave us more than coffee cups and pens. <clears throat> <clears throat> um, through that contract, we got an enhanced computer-aided dispatch system. Um, this includes computers in all the trucks. We've actually come into the, we, we've come uh, into the modern time techno technologically wise um, all the trucks have computers now. Um, they were able to see potential safety hazards before they get to a call. It's linked up with the police department. Um, hydrant locations, water main systems, there's a variety of things that are all on that computer that all they're gonna do is hit a button and they come up with that information. I would have loved to have had that 37 years ago when I started. <clears throat> um, I think one of the big things during this past five years that we accomplished was through our partnerships with the, the police, the schools, IT, um, and to some lesser extent, um, Ray Ledoux with Bad Bus and, and Beamer is, is through the partnerships that we created, when we, uh, we upgraded radio communications for both the police and the fire department. At, at very little cost, a fraction of what we would have, we would have had to spend working together. Um, one of the benefits of this is, unlike <clears throat> in years, earlier years, um, when you go to talk on a portable radio in a school building now, you don't have to go over to the window and hang it outside so you can hear what's going on. You get a crystal clear reception. <clears throat> um, 
different city departments working closely together. That was the first I saw in my 37 years as a, as a city employee, was actually people working together and, and breaking down uh, relationships. Um, one of the other things that we got done was I got a chief executive officer. He works out of the chief's office. He's my department CFO. He spends a lot of time with Jay, and um, we've been very successful with him. He, he, he has everything down to the penny. So five years ago when I was standing here, I spoke of some of the needs that we had, such as staffing apparatus and the conditions of our three oldest stations. <clears throat> Now, conversationally standing here, I just want to say that um, in those fi five years later, we still have those same problems. We've chipped away at them a little bit. I'm not laying blame on anybody. I mean, it's, it is what it is, and funds are what they are. But um, we, we really need to have a serious conversation in, going forward on, on some of these issues. The staffing, we're down 24 firefighters, and it's climbing. I mean, by by the end of July, it'll probably be up to 30. Um, this can only be, be filled by hiring or large amounts of overtime or shutting companies down. Um, four years ago, I notified the city of the aging apparatus and the need for replacing engines and two ladders in the coming years. As of this time, we replaced two engines, two grants, and those trucks are now celebrating their third birthday. How time flies. Both the trucks we replaced were put in reserve status for occasional use when a truck broke down. The former Engine 2 has been in continuous service running in place of Tower 1 on the east side for the past 18 months. Luckily, the mechanic shop is next door, so it isn't too far to fix it every day. Um, you know, we, we, we keep talking about the ladder trucks, and I know you, you, you all have pushed for funding for these various um, uh, different ways of coming up, whether it's grants, leasing, bonding, whatever. Um, but seriously, we're going to go into another winter with a 21-year-old ladder truck that's just limping by. <clears throat> um, in the stations, you know, when I came on in 1978, Station One was supposed to close. It was it was it, it, it was it was just a mess. <coughs> 37 years later, we're still working out of it, and it doesn't look like it's going to change anytime soon. Um, so when did, this, when did it become acceptable that a fire officer has to bring a bucket of water, uh, bring a, uh, a bucket to his desk when it's raining out because the roofs are leaking all the time? When did it become accept, uh, acceptable to operate in cold, damp, mice-ridden stations? We got three very old, 130-year-old stations that need to be replaced in the coming years, some way, somehow. They're going to have to do something. Um, but with that, I want to thank you all for your support. I know at various times you've, you've always had an open ear for me and, and tried to help me in any way you can, and I, I fully appreciate that. I officially retire as your fire chief on May 9, 2015, after 37 years of faithful service to the city. It's been an honor and a privilege, and please give the incoming chief the same level of support. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. <laughs> Mr. President. Uh, Councilor Cruz. If I may approach the rostrum. Yes, you may, Councilor. Thank you. I, uh, I golf with the chief on Sundays, and I have to tell you that the language he uses isn't much like what he just used right there. It shouldn't be used on Sunday, but we won't go there. I have some, a presentation on behalf of the entire city council, but uh, um, I know it's, it's been a tough job. For the, you know, the chief came in after a long, long serving chief, and it's not easy to follow somebody's foot, footsteps and do, put his own imprint on the uh, department, and I think he did a great job of doing that. It's been a pleasure working with you. It'll be more of a pleasure taking your money on Sundays, but uh, we'll get to that later. Um, and of course, back when he started 37 years ago, I think the most expensive part of a fire truck was the two horses that pulled it, wasn't it? Yes. <laughs> um, 
But I'd like to read this now on behalf of the City Council. City of Brockton, Massachusetts, official citation. Be it known that the Brockton City Council hereby extends its congratulations to Chief Richard Francis in recognition of his dedication and service to the citizens of Brockton and to the citizens of Brockton as a member of the Brockton Fire Department for 40 years at his retirement as Chief of that department. And be it further known that the City Council extends best wishes for continued success, that this citation be duly signed by the President of the Council and attested to and a copy thereof transmitted by the Clerk of the Council. By Dennis R. Ian Erie, President of the Council, Anthony F. Zioli, Clerk of the Council, and offered by Councilor Timothy Cruz, April 27, 2015. I thank you very much. <laughs> I'm sure that we recognize the uh, person who stays home because uh, for a firefighter or, uh, or a police officer, the person who has to daily worry is uh, a wonderful member of the class of 1974, which a few of us are, uh, the Chief's uh, wife, Mary. Come on up. Thank you, Chief, for those 37 tremendous years. We definitely appreciate it. Thank you. Councilor DiNapoli, you had a comment? Councilor, well, Councilor DiNapoli, he had... I'll, I'll yield to... Uh, Councilor Stansky. Go ahead. He's Chief Stansky, I should say. Yes, yes, you may, Councilor. Uh, first of all, I'd like to commend the fire chief and thank him for going to community firefighting. I agree with you totally. Thank you very much. Secondly, we have a birthday today. Uh, last year's president... Council lies Robert Sullivan turned uh, the magic 45 today. 25, he said. 25, right? 25, <laughs> I'm sorry. 25. Thank you. Happy Thank birthday, you. Councilor. Thank you. <laughs> one quick one. I, I, I claim to be an only child, but I, that's a little lie when I say that. And uh, I have, have a, what we call an Irish twin. And tomorrow morning at 12.01 a.m., my brother Charles, Chick, uh, will be the same age as his former oldest member of the family. So I'm wishing him a happy birthday also. Thank you. Birthday, happy birthday to Chick. Thank you. <laughs> Councilor, uh, Councilor DiNapoli. Th thank you, Mr. President. Stand, I just, please. I, st <laughs> I, for I forgot where your city council. No, we were, Councilor. Uh, Chief, I just want to uh, congratulate you. Uh, you and I spent uh, some evenings together, zoning board traffic for many, many years. And uh, you've done a, an outstanding job. And uh, I just want to wish you and your wife uh, many, many happy years and enjoy. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor. <laughs> Councilor, Councilor Sullivan. Thank you, Mr. President. I uh, just want to echo the sentiments and I want to thank you, Chief, for your service to the city of Brockton. When you think of Chief Francis, you think of two things, public service and a true gentleman. And I mean that wholeheartedly. So thank you and best of luck. <laughs> thank you, Councilor. Anyone? Councilor Moynihan. Well, uh, I got to say, I don't normally speak up <coughs> too often, but it has been such a pleasure working with him. And whenever I brought him in to speak, uh, it was for his knowledge, but it was also you'd never know what he was going to say, and I loved it. So. <laughs> Thanks again, Chief. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor. And again, thank you. Thank you, Chief, for your uh, many, many years of service. We, we definitely appreciate it very much. Let's take a two-minute recess. <laughs>
No, we're running. Council meeting's back in session. <clears throat> Mr. Clerk? Madam Clerk, I should say. We have the report of the Finance Committee for its meeting of April 21st, 2015. Accepted and placed on file. Communication from the Commonwealth of Massachusetts Assistant Dr District Attorney stating that the City Council did not violate the open meeting law. In reaching this determination, they reviewed the complaint filed with this council, the council's response, and the complaint filed with their office. They now consider this matter closed. Accepted and placed on file. Communication from the treasurer collector requesting a transfer of 275000 from treasure, treasurer's debt service to treasurer tax collector Medicare tax. This transfer is necessary to cover the expected shortfall due to budget cuts and unanticipated overtime due to the remainder of the fiscal year. Accepted and placed on file. From the mayor recommending the same. Accepted and placed on file. From the CFO relative to the same. Accepted and placed on file. From the DPW commissioner requesting an appropriation of $304,632 awarded to the City of Brockton by Governor <coughs> Charles Baker under the Winter Recovery Assistance Program for the purpose of patching potholes, cracking and other surface defects including paving projects, repair and replacement of signage, guardrail and storm grates or road striping or painting and other approved projects. Further requesting that the order and authorization designate the DPW Commissioner to carry out the work to be performed under the conditions of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts standard contract form. Accepted and placed on file. From the Mayor, in accordance with Mass General Law, recommending an appropriation of $304,632 from available funds winter recovery assistance program to RAP fund. This is a state award under the Chapter 90 formula for patching potholes, cracking, and other surface defects, including paving projects, repair, and replacement of signage, guardrail, in storm grates or road striping or painting and other approved projects. Further requesting that the order and authorization designate the DPW Commissioner to carry out the work to be performed under the conditions of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts standard contract form. As the receipt of the award letter from the state was delayed, hereby requesting that this order be adopted under suspension of the rules to ensure the work is completed before June 30th, 2015. Accepted and placed on file. From the CFO relative to the same. Accepted and placed on file ordered that the City Council rescind Order 76 as adopted by the Council on March 9, 2015 for the purpose of accepting and spending a $339,000 40-hour Smart Growth Incentive Dividend for various planning purposes. Accordingly, requesting that the City Council establish a revolving fund for the intended purpose in accordance with Mass General Law Chapter 44, Section 53E and a half. The question is on adoption by a roll call vote. Mr. Clerk, we please call the roll. Hazard. Yes. Barnes. Yes. Cruz. Yes. Annapolis. Yes. Pioneer. Yes. Monaghan. Yes. Rodriguez. Yes. Studinsky. Yes. Sullivan. Yes. The, the order is adopted. Ordered that pursuant to the Mass General Law, Chapter 44, Section 53E <clears throat> and a half, the City Council authorizes the establishment of a 40-hour Smart Grant Incentive Revolving Fund for said receipts from the Commonwealth of Massachusetts for purposes of engaging professional consulting services to prepare a citywide comprehensive plan, downtown redevelopment, redevelopment plan, downtown district improvement plan, Campello District Redevelopment Plan, and to help fund the management by the Brockton Redevelopment Authority of the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development Home Program. Expenditure from the revolving fund shall be under the direction of the Department of Planning and Economic Development and shall be limited to $350,000 in fiscal year 15. The question is on adoption by a roll call vote. Mr. Clerk, please call the roll. Azak. Yes. Barnes. Yes. Cruz. Yes. Annapolis. Yes. Pioneer. Yes. Monaghan. Yes. Rodriguez. Yes. Studinsky. Yes. Sullivan. Yes. Nine the order is adopted. Appropriation of 3500 from National Association of County and City Health Officials, Department of Health and Human Services Grant Fund, the City of Brockton Board of Health. These grant monies are for the purpose of building the level of volunteers for the local medical reserve corps. The question is on adoption by a roll call vote. Mr. Clerk, please call the roll. Azar. Yes. Barnes. Yes. Cruz. Yes. Annapolis. Yes. Pioneer. Yes. Monaghan. Yes. Rodriguez. Yes. Studinsky. Yes. Sullivan. Yes. Not the, the order is adopted. Appropriation of $3,000 from the Massachusetts Emergency Management Agency HMEP grant to Brockton Emergency Management Agency HMEP grant fund. 
The Brockton Emergency Management Agency intends to use these grant funds to purchase a Panasonic top pad computer. No match is required. The question is on adoption by a roll call vote. Mr. Clerk, please call the roll. Azak. Yes. Barnes. Yes. Cruz. Yes. Annapolis. Yes. Lineary. Yes. Monaghan. Yes. Rodriguez. Yes. Stadinsky. Yes. Sullivan. Yes. The order is adopted. Appropriation of one million fifteen thousand four hundred and forty dollars from available funds Brockton's Chapter ninety apportionment for fiscal year two thousand fifteen to highway transportation project funds fiscal year fifteen chapter ninety projects to provide additional funding for the purpose of the design and construction costs necessary for approved projects. This request is based on an increase in the Chapter 90 apportionment for fiscal year 15 from $2,030,878 to $3,046,318. Further requesting that the order and authorization <coughs> designate the DPW commissioner to carry out the work to be performed under the conditions of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts standard contract. The question is on adoption by roll call vote. Mr. Clerk, please call the roll. Azak. Yes. Barnes. Yes. Cruz. Yes. Annapolis. Yes. Annapolis. Yes. Yes. Rodriguez. Yes. 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 The order is adopted. Appropriation of twelve thousand dollars from Massachusetts Executive Office of Public Safety and Security, EOPSS Highway Safety Division, FY 2015 Traffic Enforcement Grant to City of Brockton Police Department, EOPSS FY 15 Traffic Enforcement Grant Fund. Questions on adoption by a roll call vote. Mr. Clerk, please call the roll. Azak. Yes. Barnes. Yes. Cruz. Yes. Annapolis. Yes. Neary. Yes. Monaghan. Yes. Rodriguez. Yes. Stadinsky. Yes. Sullivan. Yes. The order is adopted. Transfer of $15,000 from Fire Department Ambulance Receipts to Fire Department Purchase of Services to be used for the payment to perform software support for the period of July 1st, 2015 to June 30th, 2016. This provides for support services to the computer-aided dispatching CAD program currently in use at Fire Alarm. The question is on adoption by a roll call vote. Mr. Clerk, please call the roll. Yes. Barnes. Yes. Cruz. Yes. Annapolis. Yes. Pioneering. Yes. Monaghan. Yes. Rodriguez. Yes. Stadinsky. Yes. Sullivan. Yes. <clears throat> the order is adopted. Transfer of $90,000 from <clears throat> Fire Department Ambulance serv Receipts to Fire Department Capital Projects. For 911 Next Generation Mandated System Upgrade of the Secondary PSAP for purchase of three fire alarm operator positions. This will allow for receipt of all transferred 911 calls from the soon to be upgraded 911 generation system at the police station relating to fire and EMS incidents with all available necessary information. Question is on adoption by a roll call vote. Mr. Clerk, please call the roll. Yes. Barnes. Yes. Cruz. Yes. Annapolis. Yes. Pioneering. Yes. Monaghan. Yes. Rodriguez. Yes. Stadinsky. Yes. Sullivan. Yes. Nine in the affirmative. The order is adopted. Ordered that pursuant to Mass General Law, Chapter 44, Section 53, E and a half, the City Council authorizes an amendment to the previously authorized fiscal year 2015 abandonment building revolving fund, allowing expenditures made on the authority and direction of the Brockton Building Commissioner to be increased from no more than 75,000 to no more than 250,000. Question is on adoption by a roll call vote. Mr. Clerk, please call the roll. Azak. Yes. Barnes. Yes. Cruz. Yes. Annapolis. Yes. Pioneering. Yes. Monaghan. Yes. Rodriguez. Yes. Stadinsky. Yes. Sullivan. Yes. Nine in the affirmative. The order is adopted. Order that the City Council of the City of Brockton hereby approves and directs the holding of an election on May 12, 2015 for his residents to vote on whether to permit the oper operation of a gaming establishment at the site of the Brockton Fairgrounds, notwithstanding that a new positive determination of suitability may not be yet, may not have been issued to the Gaming and Entertainment LLC and its related qualifiers by the Massachusetts Gaming Commission by such date. The question is on adoption by a roll call vote. Mr. Clerk, please call the roll. Azak. Yes. Barnes. Yes. Cruz. Yes. Annapolis. Yes. Pioneering. Yes. Monaghan. Yes. Rodriguez. Yes. Stadinsky. Yes. Sullivan. Yes. Nine in the affirmative. The order is adopted. Order that the City of Brockton Government Study <coughs> Committee is hereby established to, com to be comprised of seven citizens of the city, three of whom are to be appointed by the mayor and four of whom are to be appointed by the city council president. Each committee member shall be a registered voter to the extent possible 
possesses expertise or knowledge relevant to the work of such government study committee GSC. The GSC is charged with exploring by whatever means it deems appropriate all aspects of local government, organization, and structure, the strengths and weaknesses in Brockton's current form of government, and areas for improvement, alternative models of government, and recommend changes in such organization and structure, including but not limited to the terms of office, the method of selection of officials consistent with the needs of the city, and designated to achieve greater efficiency and effectiveness in the delivery of government services. The question is on adoption by roll call vote. Mr. Clerk, please call the roll. Azar. Yes. Barnes. Yes. Cruz. No. Tanapoli. Yes. Ionieri. No. Monaghan. No. Rodriguez. Nope. Studinsky. No. Sullivan. No. Three in the affirmative, six in the negative. The order um, fails. Resolved that the Director of the Council on Aging be invited to appear before a committee of this council to provide an update relative to the Brockton Council on Aging population in the city of Brockton. Questions on adoption by roll call vote. Mr. Clerk, please call the roll. Azak. Yes. Barnes. Yes. Cruz. Yes. Annapolis. Yes. Ionieri. Yes. Monty. Yes. Rodriguez. Yes. Studinsky. Yes. Sullivan. Yes. Nine in the affirmative. <coughs> Resolve that the mayor, chief of police, chief financial officer, and the city's building superintendent come before a committee to discuss the position of code enforcement, code enforcement office in conjunction with the police department and provide the committee with an update on when its vital position will be reinstated and operational on a da daily basis. Questions on adoption by roll call vote. Mr. Clerk, please call the roll. Azan. Yes. Barnes. Yes. Cruz. Yes. Annapolis. Yes. Ionieri. Yes. Monaghan. Yes. Rodriguez. Yes. Studinsky. Yes. Sullivan. Yes. Nine in the affirmative. The order is adopted. Resolved that the representative of Stonehill College be invited to appear before a committee of this council to review the relationship between the city and the college relative to provision of city services. Questions on adoption by roll call vote. Mr. Clerk, please call the roll. Azak. Yes. Barnes. Yes. Cruz. Yes. Annapolis. Yes. Ionieri. Yes. Monaghan. Yes. yes. Rodriguez. No. Studinsky. Yes. Seven in the affirmative, one in the negative. Uh, the order is adopted. Resolved that the city solicitor be invited to appear before a committee of this council to review the issue of compliance with section 2-301 of the revised ordinances of the city of Brockton. The question is on adoption by a roll call vote. Mr. Clerk, please call the roll. Yes. Barnes. Yes. Cruz. Yes. Annapolis. Yes. Ionieri. Yes. Monaghan. Yes. Rodriguez. Yes. Studinsky. Yes. Sullivan. Yes. Nine in the affirmative. The order is adopted. Transfer of $275,000 from Treasurer's Debt Service to Treasurer Tax Collector Medicare Tax. This transfer is necessary to cover the expected shortfall through the remainder of the fiscal year due to cuts to to the budget request and because of payroll and overtime costs which are higher than the Medicare tax budget anticipated. Referred to finance. Appropriation Mr. President. Of Council of Denapoli. Mr. President, I'd like to move item number 25 under suspension of the rules to vote on it this evening and uh, because we have a time frame on this and Mr. Condon is here to, uh, if any of the councilors have any questions on this. This is the money that we're receiving under chapter 90. From exactly. the governor. Second. second. Motion's been made and seconded that we're going to suspend the rules this evening and act on it this evening. All in favor of that? Opposed? We are going to act on it first. We have to have the uh, clerk read it. Appropriation of $304,632 from Available Funds Winter Recovery Assistance Program, RAP to RAP Fund. This is a state award under the Chapter 90 formula for patching potholes, cracking, and other surface defects, including paving projects. Repair and replacement of signage, guardrail, and storm grates, or road striping, or painting and other approved projects. Further requesting that the order and authorization designate the DBW Commissioner to carry out the work to be performed under the conditions of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts standard contract form. Thank you. Councils, if there are any questions, but I think we touched based upon it somewhat even last week when uh, Mr. Condon was before us in regards to this when we voted to. Um, except the uh, other Chapter 90 monies to come uh, um, before the city. So seeing no other questions, then I'm going to ask. I actually have one. Councilor Bonds. Sorry, thank you. Um, Mr. Condon, I'm not sure if you even know this, but I know that last time Mr. Rowley was asked if uh, 
there, the list was finalized or if it was still kind of being compiled. Do you have any idea of that or how that would update? Well, I think the, the question on the, on the list of roads to be fixed was with respect to the regular Chapter 90 money. Uh, right. This particular award is for uh, pothole repairs only. It has to be spent within the next 60 days by okay, the end of this fiscal year. The list year. was for all of it. No, this is just for emergency repairs to potholes. Oh, okay. All right. Thank you for clarifying that. Thank you. Any other? Council Rodriguez. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mr. President. Uh, Mr. Connor, just a quick question for you, because in the, uh, in the opening uh, page of this, uh, of our agenda, it basically states that the, uh, the city of Brockton is getting the funds from Governor Baker, but yet, is it, coming, is it coming from Governor Baker or is it coming from the Commonwealth of Massachusetts? It's coming from the Commonwealth of Massachusetts pursuant to his, his program. So if you look at item number six on the agenda, it basically says that it was awarded to the city of Brockton by the governor. So I just wanted to make sure that, you know, for the record, that it's coming from the Commonwealth and not the governor himself. Yeah, there should have been an insert in there indicating it was Governor Baker's program awarded through the Commonwealth of Massachusetts through the State Highway Department. Okay. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, uh, Council. Any other councils? The scene's done at this, at this time. The, the question is on adoption by a roll call vote. Mr. Clerk, please call the roll. Azak. Yes. Barnes. Yes. Cruz. Yes. Napoli. Yes. Aniri. Yes. Monaghan. Yes. Rodriguez. Yes. Studinsky. Yes. Sullivan. Yes. Nine in the affirmative. And the order is adopted. Mr. President, move for reconsideration in hopes it doesn't prevail. Second. second. Motion has been made and seconded for reconsideration in hopes it does not prevail. All in favor of reconsideration? All opposed? Reconsideration fails. The resolve that Congressman Lynch come before a committee of this council to give a Washington, D.C. update. Uh, Councilors, that's going to be referred to finance, and then Councilor Barnes will do her follow-up and let me know uh, what particular date that that will uh, happen, but the Congressman does want to come before us and, and address us. Uh, President. Councilor Sullivan. If I may, I have a late file. Second. Motion to uh, remain as second. As I indicated last week, Councilors, it, it's a resolve that Mr. Mark Landy, General Manager of Brockton Community Access, and a representative from Comcast, come before the Finance Committee to discuss and explain the recent interruption to the live broadcast of the Brockton City Council meetings and what corrective action is planned and is offered by myself. Refer that item to Finance. Councilors, just a, a couple of other items I have just before we um, take any other councils, but I just want to remind all of you that don't forget that our next council meeting will be Monday, May the 11th, and that's also the night that the clerk has scheduled that we have our council photo. So that's Monday evening, May 11th at 7 p.m. right here in the council chamber, so please be present uh, for that. Thank Councilors, you. at the finance meeting, I also gave each of you a letter, went to elected officials in regards to holding of joint meetings by ward, um, inviting city council and also inviting school committee members and also inviting the southeastern regional school committee members as well and, and the mayor definitely partaking in it. As soon as the mayor gets back, he'll be back in town uh, the end of the week and when I meet with him next Tuesday, then we're going to start to select some dates. We'll be in contact with, um, I think our, our, our plan is that we start with Ward 1, 2, and 3. We'll come up with dates so they can take us through to probably into June and then have summer off and then we'll pick it up again in, uh, in September and, and finish it out. So I will, I will keep you abreast to what we're going to be doing there um, on these particular meetings. Um, and also next Monday evening we'll have our uh, finance meeting uh, right here at uh, 7 p.m. Any, anything else, councilors? Mr. Mr. President. President. Councilor, Councilor DiNapoli, I'm uh, sorry. A moment of personal privilege? Yes, you may, Councilor. Uh, this week, I'm sure all of us have received numerous calls on the, uh, the vote that's coming up here on May 12th on the casino issue. Uh, and uh, the question is, who can vote? As long as anybody is a registered voter, and the time has passed to register to vote on May the 12th, anybody can vote on the casino. You can vote yes and you can vote no. And there was a lot of uh, controversy and a lot of, uh, 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 there was another document that was sent out in the mail also that's confusing both issues. So I just wanna make sure that people understand that uh, the vote for May 12th, and the polls open at seven o'clock and close at eight o'clock at night, that that's the casino vote issue only, and you vote yes, you vote no. Thank you, Mr. Thank President. You. Thank you, President. President. Councilor Sullivan. I'm gonna personal privilege if I could. Yes, you may. Councilors, I just wanna let you know, as chair of the ordinance committee, I'm calling a, uh, an ordinance committee meeting uh, next Monday, 
uh, at 6 o'clock. Uh, those that sit on it, we have a, a few things uh, that we need to address. Uh, nothing to do with any overlay district. That would be later on. Uh, and also some, uh, some proposals will be later on from the planning office. But it's just some cleanup things, so 6 o'clock here. And also, if I could, Mr. President, I just wanted to thank uh, all those uh, that participated yesterday in the West uh, Youth Baseball opening day at the Rock Stadium, Campanelli. Uh, it was a beautiful day. Uh, my son actually plays in that league for Nemo's Market, and I was able to throw out the first pitch. And believe it or not, I did better than Tom Brady. The socks because I didn't put it in the dirt. So I want to thank the kids, the coaches, and the parents. Thank you. Have a good season. Thank you, Councilor. Mr. President. Councilor Azak. A moment of personal privilege. Yes, you may, Councilor. I would like to announce that we're having a Ward 7 meeting next um, Thursday, May 7th at 7 p.m. at North Junior High. It's not next Thursday, but the following Thursday, so in two weeks. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you Councilor. Any other business councilors? Seeing none, meetings adjourned.